Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders and today I am doing my 10 cards one video for the April 2024 card kits. Let's start out with playing with these fine line bottles from Spellbinders. Spellbinders sent these to me to show you. They hold 30 mils or one ounce of whatever you want to put in them. They have a nice fine tip needle for precision uh, application and I'm going to take some of this Barely Art Precision glue and I have some extra needles from uh, Barely Arts and they fit in this needle perfectly. So I'm going to unscrew the cap and take what's left of my Barely Arts glue which um, it was going so slowly out of this bottle that I had to add a little water to loosen it up a bit before I filled my bottle. Now I am just putting some of this glue down in lines here so you can see how beautifully this applicator works. I am actually quite loving this. If you have difficulties squeezing those bottles, this can be um, a big lifesaver for you. I pulled out the um, stitching die of the month and die cut a bunch of the floral parts from this and I did some stitching. I'm doing some prep work for many of the cards that we're making today in this video and I'm going to show you the stitching on the two flowers. There are lots of ways you can do the stitching on these flowers. Um, this is just how I'm choosing to do it. Now to lock my threads in place here on this particular flower, I looped it through all right, I went underneath the previous stitching and then repeated that so that it looped it through and locked it into the already there stitches. Um, later on, I end up leaving a tail at the beginning and just making sure I hold it in place before I um, finish the stitching. And then I take another tail and tie those two tails together in a box knot or a double knot. And that seemed to work very well. I am just doing each of these petals kind of in a fan uh, arrangement of stitching here. There's one hole at the base of each of these petals and then um, holes of varying lengths or distances from that hole that frame the inside of that petal. And that's what I'm choosing to do for this one. I'm using some embroidery, or sorry, not embroidery thread. This is um, crochet thread. Um, and I've done a little more research. I was searching for more of this secondhand thread. You can buy crochet thread. It is very easy to obtain. Just many of the big box craft stores carry it. Um, you can get it online. It's very easy to find. And I just like that there it's one strand that is the same thickness roughly of one of the embroidery threads and I don't have to worry as much about twisting and separating because I'm doing this bulky stitching. I'm just about finished with our first flower and I'm just going to again loop through and this is not going to get a lot of wear and tear so you don't have to worry about knotting it especially. So now, oh, this is the larger of the two flowers. So I did the individual petal flowers. Now I have one of the circle um, stitched pieces. Now I'm showing you going from the outer edge to the inside of this circle to make my five spokes to create our little cabbage rose stitching but really you want to go from the center stitch out so that when you come back up at the very end you're already in the middle and you don't have to try and figure out how you're going to hide your extra stitch. So once I have my five spokes stitched in here and I did start my stitching at normal speed at the beginning of this vid video and now I'm doing uh, double speed or I've sped the video up to double speed to um, make this go a little faster. Now I'm going, now I'm slowing it down again so that you can see, well actually I think I had it at double speed until now because it's a little difficult to see that I am truly going every other spoke as I uh, 
build our cabbage rows. And you just repeat the stitch until you have a rose filled out uh, as full as you want it to go. Now, I know this video took me a long time to complete and I had um, a tough start to my month. Um, many of you have heard me talk about my mom being in the nursing home. Well, we uh, very the very last week of April, no, sorry, March, we had to put mom on hospice. And um, I spent the Easter weekend uh, sitting vigil with her and she passed away on April 1st. So it's been a it's been hard for me to um, complete all of my responsibilities and um, have the time even to make this video. Does that mean it was a hardship for me to do? No, I really needed the time um, because crafting really is my therapy. This is how I find a way to distract myself from the troubles of my life or even just good or bad stressors. It doesn't matter. Having this hobby to help me out to find some creative space to be doing something simply for myself to um, heal my soul, to feed my soul. Um, so it did take me some extra time. Um, I did take a couple days off of work. I am taking care of myself. Everyone's, everyone's been very kind. Uh, and I, I know a lot of people have experienced this kind of loss. And honestly, I probably won't process this until after her funeral, which isn't until the end of the month. There's our beautiful flower with the cabbage rose in the center. Getting back to the video. And many people have um, asked when my next video was coming out, being a little concerned that it has taken me so long because I keep saying I'm trying to get these done sooner. My goal is actually to have these done by the 6th of the month and get them posted because that's when you have your early access to order the new releases for that month, not just the club ones, but if you're a club member, you have access to early access ordering for the new main releases for the month. Um, yeah, doesn't always work. I'm uh, uh, Maybe I'll get to it. And FYI, I'm going on a cruise the end of May. So my June video might be a little late. Maybe my May one will be on time. Good heavens. I just keep trying to pack way too much into my life. Anyway, thank you for all of the concern that I've been uh, seeing, all of the well, the all of the comments that I get on all of my videos. I read every single one of them. I honestly just don't have time to answer them, but I want you all to know that I very much appreciate hearing from you. Um, and I will answer specific questions as soon as I am able related to products, etc. Um, yeah, <laughs> trying to keep this together um, and not be too emotional, which oddly enough, why I'm feeling emotional now while I'm just talking to my computer when I really know I'm talking to all of you, but I'm just sitting here by myself. I haven't been emotional yet. That will come. We all have to do our grieving in our own way. I did do some spoke type stitching on this circle. I did want to try to do the um, that little cabbage rose on those smaller circles, but it's an even number, not sorry, it's an odd number of, of holes on the outer rim of that circle already. So you don't have enough space between the stitches to do the cabbage rose rows because you can't go every other stitch. Then we have these really cute little green leaves and they have stitching where you can create the veins of the flowers. And as you can see, I have a lot of flowers and leaves die cut here. I finished my 10 card videos and I still have a lot of these left. So I could make a bunch more cards. I will file those away for future use. I have several little baggies full of pre-created elements that I thought I was going to use. Um, and I'm thinking I need to use those mushrooms from September. Mushrooms are actually hunted in the spring where I live. Morel season is coming up soon. Now, if I only knew someone who knew where the morels were. 
I really am finding that the stitching is um, a very awesome, uh, mindless craft that I really enjoy doing, sitting, watching videos and stuff, if I just want to keep my hands busy and not have to think too much. So I'm really, this has been really uh, a great le learning thing for me. Next, we're going to do my foiling for our prep work. And I have some cards, black cardstock here. Now I got this particular package of black cardstock off of Amazon. It was a really actually inexpensive black cardstock, but I'm finding that it actually foils quite nicely. Go through your stash, try your different cardstocks. You may be surprised what works really well. Now I'm using the Glimmer of the Month and this is a stitching, it's a bunch of different stitching lines. And so they're relatively fine, so they don't have a lot of, of solid areas. And those kinds of uh, glimmer plates tend to have more forgiving qualities when it comes to the different cardstocks that you use. I decided to use one of our rainbow foils, and I just love how that looks on the black cardstock. I'm going to create a, fr a frame around this, slightly smaller than five by seven. I think it's four and a half by six and a half inches this black panel so I'm doing uh, the full length of this stitching and I have to do a little bit of creative uh, foil placement because our foil rolls are five inches wide and I need just a little more length than that so I had cut I think those are three quarter inch, half inch or three quarter inch strips off of the foil roll. And I'm just tucking in a little bit more of the foil, just trim off little pieces to extend them so they're long enough. And the foil plate itself is about, it's just under six inches long, which works perfectly for this. Now the top and bottom are going to be uh, less wide than the foil plate so you don't have to do any creative cutting with the foil just going to tack that on there and we'll have our third side complete one more and I'll have all four of them done you can see that I'm lining them up with just a little bit of the black showing underneath one edge of the foil plate to keep it really quite straight I think this turned out amazing. <laughs> now to continue that black foil, or sorry, black cardstock with rainbow foiling, I have a piece of rainbow foil that I've cut to, I believe this is three inches wide, and I had cut a six inch piece, no, six and a half inch piece of foil, and trimmed it down to fit, um, because it was five inches by six in six and a half inches I cut the five inch five inch side down to three inches so that it would fit on our piece of cardstock without me having to um, fold the foil under the cardstock when I foiled it now I'm going to take the one quarter inch best ever craft tape and we're going to um, connect these foil plates so that they will stay in place. I'm carefully tucking the ends under the cardstock. Then I'm going to lift it up off of my surface, make sure everything lays nice and flat. But since these are all a little bit loosely hinged, I did have to readjust some things. Now I will carefully flip this back over and tuck my tape underneath. Then we'll put this on the um, glimmer foil platform and run that. Actually, I stick it back on the heating base, heat it up till the light's flashing, push the timer, which lasts about a minute. And when the timer finishes blinking, then I run it through my die cut machine. Now one more time, we're going to take our hinged together stitches and some rainbow foil on some white cardstock. This time the piece is like six and a half inches by five inches because I wasn't, I wanted to make this as big as I could and I do ultimately cut this down. Now you can see that I've taken one piece of 
um, polished brass foil and just did some creative lining up. I had placed the foil plates on the platform um, with a piece of A2 sized copy paper and then um, used A2 sized pieces of cardstock and that foil to keep foiling with the same piece just to make a very efficient use of that foil. And I was able to foil four times on one piece of foil. That worked out really well. Now I'm going to make a rainbow, of course, because you know me, I have to have some rainbows. Um, a rainbow of Distress Oxide ink. I've got picked raspberry, dried marigold, scattered straw, cracked pistachio, um, broken china, and dusty concord. Then I'm going to take the one stitch at a time 3D embossing folder and we're going to uh, emboss this. Now I did do uh, this twice. Um, this is the one I'm actually going to use. I used Pearl Luster Gilding Polish and I had tried it with Graphite um, uh, Gilding Polish which is a deep shiny gray. But I smeared, <laughs> this dries pretty fast, but there uh, is a, a short drying time that's needed. And the graphite one, when you smear it, it shows up very, very well. So you can see I smeared that a little bit. And I did still debate about using it, but I just didn't like the smeary quality of it. So I tried the pearl and here we're going to use that glue that we just um, bottled up which I'm really loving. I used it through this entire video. Anyway I thought about using the graphite uh, gilding polished piece but uh, I didn't want to redo it and I didn't want the smear so we stuck stuck with the pearl luster which actually looks quite nice and helps tie the white cardstock base in. And this is, of course, a five by seven card. We're going to use the large die of the month, pins and needles jar. I want to use this scissor. It's just beautiful. It's that very elegant filigreed um, design. It looks like a fancy pair of snips that you would use when you're doing embroidery or any fine detail work, snipping the extra threads off of a quilt or your finished garment. Um, and I find that this is actually really an appropriate theme for this month. One of my, the things that my mom was very good at was uh, she was an excellent seamstress. She didn't do a lot of embroidery or anything like that. She didn't make a bunch of quilts, but she did regularly sew her own clothing. Um, she also sewed stuffed animals and oh my gosh if you remember cabbage patch dolls she made her own version and we did take those items to craft fairs um, that's one of the many things that we sold at the craft fairs was her sewn projects so many things oh my gosh i she just changed up what she made all the time to keep up with uh, the market demands now that we have our beautiful scissor created and I did use brushed black and brushed silver cardstock which has a little extra heft to it and it really takes embossed details well. Next we're going to use the clear stamp and die of the month. We've got happy and birthday. There's a coordinating die for the word happy and I don't know if you've noticed but Spellbinders is now carrying the versifying Claire inks. I've got um, charming pink, summertime and cheerful here. I did get all of the Versifying Claire colors and I love them. They work great for better press and they have this amazing sharp crisp uh, stamping every single time just like the Versifying Claire Nocturne ink and I'm doing uh, some ink ombre here and I do clean off the stamp before I do the yellow, just because that one's the most easily contaminated. The pink and the orange were fine being uh, inking up at the same time. And since these are a pigment ink, they emboss wonderfully. I use some clear embossing powder here and I am going to heat set this and you're going to see this beautiful stitched happy show right up. Now this happy, and the happy from the die of the month 
this month are the same size. The dies are not interchangeable though. You can't use the happy die from the large, or sorry, this die of the month kit to die cut this letter. It just wouldn't quite work out. I'm going to show you a comparison of the two here in just a little bit. We're taking the small sub sentiment, and I did use some white pigment ink to stamp that, and I'm going to uh, use some white embossing powder over the top of that. By using a white pigment ink to do the stamping, if there's any embossed area that doesn't take the powder, it will still be white underneath. It just helps it be a much more crisp white uh, embossing. Here we're taking the coordinating die for the happy and I'm using one of these sentiment strips that I keep in my foiled sentiments bag. These are from the mini sincere sentiments and it's just really nice to have a sentiment strip that cuts all of these small sentiments for you. I'm just going to trim off with my paper trimmer the tails of this sentiment and that's because I didn't trust myself with a scissor at this moment. <laughs> there we have our nice even sentiment. I'm going to use some scraps of black cardstock. Now I don't tend to match up the same color for all of my small little dies when I do some paper to back it to do a little elevation of my sentiment or my piece. But when it's black, I like to back it with black. It just looks better, I think, if it's backed with black, if it is a black element. I did die cut a couple extra of the happy dies. And we'll glue those to the back of our happy sentiment. Just making sure that's all lined up. Again, I'm really enjoying this small bottle. It's very easy to control. You don't have to squeeze very hard at all. So if you have some arthritis issues in your hands, um, the this bottle might make a big difference for you. And there are two bottles in that um, package. I think the... Um, I really don't know how much they cost. I can't remember exactly. I did look it up. I just don't remember. Now here's a comparison with the faux stitched sentiments and floss. This is the die of the month this month. So you can see that it is stitched like faux stitched also, but it's got nice smooth edges. Whereas the clear stamp and die coordinating happy has a little bit of, um, it's like little bits of bumpiness as the shadow around the edges of that happy. It's not real pronounced, but it is just different enough that when you hold them up to each other, you can tell the difference. Now I'm adding our sentiments to the front of the card, just making sure I get everything lined up nicely and using my glue. There are, I think two or three layers here. I added a couple extra little bumps on each end there just to make sure it fit over the end of the scissors here without any extra bumpiness in the sentiment. Now for inside, I'm going to take the better press of the month the stitched for you and I want that scissor and one of, this, one of the sentiments. There's a coordinating die for that scissor so we'll have that ready to go and I'm going to use the same VersaFine Claire Nocturne inks. Now you can certainly use the better press inks. I just really wanted to play with these and see how they turned out. I have a piece of Spellbinders watercolor paper here and I'm making sure my plate is clean before I run this through the die cut machine. I don't want to get, I guess since I'm using the die it wouldn't have mattered, but I didn't want to get any ink where um, I wasn't wanting it. I have another piece of cardstock, or sorry, of watercolor here taped to the plate and I ran it through with one of the sentiments. Now I'm going to take some of the, oh, what is that? Picked raspberry and dry, no, that's not dried marigold, that's spiced marmalade. I, I said that wrong earlier. So we're gonna use the picked raspberry and the spiced marmalade and paint those in over the um, Charming Pink and the Cheerful VersaFine Claire uh, inked 
areas on this scissor. The blade on this scissor is yellow. And I believe I started with the yellow when I did the inking on the better press so that it would not get contaminated with the other two colors. Now that I have that pressed, cut, and watercolored, there are two elements we're going to put inside the card. I just wanted to bring that scissor to the inside of the card also and just really highlight that we have two different ways to create this scissor in the different um, club kits this month. I'm really enjoying the coordinating nature of all of the club kits. It really is a lot of fun to combine them all. This says best stitches on your birthday. For card number two, we're going to pull out the A2 gift card holder and card builder. I think that's what it said. This is a new release for April. And you have this die here that I am taking and using some foiled paper to create the insert for the inside of the card that holds the gift card. So you can see that there's no die cut line on the top of this because you want to put it on a piece of folded cardstock to create your gift card holder element. See how easy that was to do? Now you're going to do valley folds on the ends here. And I have an, uh, what is this? This is a four bar card. So it's actually designed for an A2 size card which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This one is three and a half by five inches and it will still work beautifully. So you're gonna take your folded element and you're, you don't really have to be as fussy as I was here. You're just gonna fold it, stick it into the fold of the inside of the card and then close it. I did use liquid adhesive, that is my preferred method. And now you have your gift card holder inside. So I did cut a couple extra panels here, the same size as the front panel, coincidentally. And this is just going to hide the edges of the gift card holder and give a little more stability to the entire card. I didn't decorate these pieces at all. I have seen some embossed, like embossing folder uh, designs on the insides of some of the cards that are using this, but I just wanted a plain one. Here I've got, this is just a hotel key. I use those as placeholders often for gift holders. And you can see how nicely that sticks right in there. It holds it in and it's not difficult to move around. Now I am applying this foiled piece from earlier in the video. And we're going to use the faux stitched sentiments and floss. We're going to cut thanks, and I'm actually using some of the new glitter paper from uh, Spellbinders. I use that to die cut our thanks, and I have a couple extra layers of cardstock behind that. We're going to take the stitching die of the month, walls, our stitched wall hanging, and I actually took some red cardstock and die cut those flowers and did the same stitching with some yellow and gold um, crochet thread just because they didn't quite, the other colors didn't really match the foiling that I had done. Now we're going to adhere thanks to the front of the card using that same uh, glue that we just packaged up. Sorry if you can hear some crunching in the background. My puppy thinks this is a good time to have a little snack. <laughs> I do all of my recording at the kitchen table. Not even sure why I started it there, but that's where I do it. Next, we're doing the flowers, and I'm using these foam squares or foam strips from Spellbinders. These were sent to me recently, and I really do like them. They're a little thinner. Not the thinnest I've ever seen, but they are a little thinner. And um, the strips are supposed to be really nice for doing shaker cards and such. <clears throat> That's not what I'm doing today, but they do work nicely if you cut them apart to put them behind these flowers. I'm just making sure that they're small enough that they don't peek through the holes from the stitching. Just adding those on each up above and below the word thanks. I've got some branches of flowers that I've cut from some green cardstock. 
I couldn't tell you which green this is. It's It was pulled out of my rainbow of paper scraps file folder. <laughs> it's pretty full. That uh, scrap bin does not even close. <laughs> I had to find another box to sit it in so that it would uh, not spill all over the place. I have to use more of those scraps, but I love having that scrap file. I don't have to cut into new pieces of cardstock hardly ever. Sometimes I struggle a little bit finding the right color green or blue. Those are a little bit, I often have a very good idea of what color I want to use. So we're just going to keep tucking these branches in until we get the arrangement we want. And since those have very thin stems, you can um, change the direction they're going very easily. We're going to take those pre-foiled sentiments and the banner that comes in the Glimmer of the Month kit, and we're going to uh, die cut a sentiment for the inside. Now, when I cut out all of those stitching dies, there's also some not stitching components of the floral arrangements. There are two branches, and each of those branches has a die that cu cuts the little buds or berries that go on them and each of those dies cuts the right number of elements to be glued to the uh, branches. Now to simplify things I cut both of these from the same color branches and the same color of the layering elements. They're very easy to apply. Just a dot of glue and then I use my little wax tip pickup stick to get those placed correctly. Now I have my little banner. I'm going to glue that down. I thought about putting on the lower portion and decided it was easier if I'm going to write a message to write it on the lower portion because the upper portion has all the lumpy bumpiness from the front of the card. I'm adding a little bit of glue behind my cute little berries here and I'm going to add those peeking out from behind the banner. And then I'll do the same for this five, uh, five element, five bud branch, and we'll stick that under the other side. This has a very springy feel to me, which, you know what? It's actually starting to feel like spring here in Minnesota. I don't know if we're going to get any more snow. You never know. We usually get pretty hammered in April, but uh, so far we had a snowstorm the end of March, and it's all pretty much melted, and now we're getting rain. All right, on to card number three. We're going to start with the Happy Stitching Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. We're going to take a couple of these sub sentiments and this melony pink colored cardstock with white pigment ink. I'm going to white heat emboss these again. So I'm going to stamp this two or three times to get a good solid inking. And I'm not pressing very hard because I want these to stay nice and um, crisp. We're going to use the Alabaster White Brutus Monroe Embossing Powder. I don't have the Spellbinders White Embossing Powder. And honestly, if you have several kinds of embossing powders, often they're pretty interchangeable. I have found that the Brutus Monroe uh, Embossing Powders are my favorite, though. They have a nice raised, shiny quality to them. <clears throat> Now that I have that all heat embossed, I'm going to, I trimmed them out with the mini sincere sentiment strip dies, and then I cut off with my scissor the ends of those tails. We're also going to use the faux stitch sentiments and floss um, sentiment again. This one is happy, so this is going to read sending happy thoughts. I'm using the glimmer foiled, um, three by six piece. We're going to make a mini slimline card here. I did put some extra cardstock behind that panel and we'll glue that down. Just going to line those edges up nicely. You could, I could have done a black cardstock base. I decided the happy was going to tie in the white cardstock base very nicely. So that's what I stuck with. We're layering this up. There are going to be a total of three layers for this happy. 
And for me, that's just the right amount of lift off of the page or off of the cardstock to really make it stand out. I know this is black against or white against black, but I really needed that little bit of extra heft to make this look and feel the way I wanted it to look and feel. Adding that last layer of glue before we glue it to the front of the card. Using my tweezers here and the stitching to help me line this up as straight as I can on the card front. And since it's liquid glue, I have a little extra time to wiggle that in the right position that I want it in. I am, of course, just eyeballing this. I don't use a T-square very often. And these lines of stitching really do help. Although now I'm looking at this, they look a little crooked in a couple of spots. That's okay. <laughs> no one's going to be looking that closely. Next, I'm using the clear stamp uh, of the month again. And there's this beautiful cross-stitched heart in this set. I'm just moving it. Um, I started with the charming pink in the center. And then on each side of that, I did the cheerful. And on the, each side of the cheerful, I did the... No, yeah, summertime, or is it the other way around? The orange, then the yellow, and then finished it off with the pink again. And use Thinking of You with each stitch. On to card number four. We're going to pull out the pins and needles jar. I'm going to make a shaped car with, card with this. I'm starting out with, I think this is like six inches by four four and a half I can't remember it's a little larger than the uh, than a a2 size card this does fit in an a2 size envelope when you're done cutting it out I just made sure that the fold was beyond the cut line now we're going to take one of an old heart die you could use whatever heart you find this was from an older die set we're going to use the faux stitched um, Hmm. the embossing folder of the month. And now I'm going to pull in one of the better press inks. Now I'm not using this to do better pressing, but I thought it was a really great complement to this pink cardstock. This is the strawberry better press ink. And I personally have all of the refills for all of the colors of better press ink because you it is a small ink pad. You do go through the ink faster and it is a slightly thicker ink. So it is great to have the refills. Anyway, I wanted to do some direct to paper inking over this embossed panel. And I was just going to do the heart, but then I realized I wanted some pattern on our little pin cushion on the top of this jar. So I embossed that same color cardstock um, after I die cut the element, and then I did the same direct to paper inking. We have some brushed silver cardstock die cut with the uh, ring for this jar. And I'm just adhering that and they fit right into each other here. Then I'm going to take the uh, taffy ink and an ink blender brush and I'm going to blend in from the edges. I just want there to be a tint of this pink in the jar. I don't want it to be that stark white, and this actually blends quite nicely. And it washed off of my uh, crafting surface pretty well too. And this will, which surprised me because it will stain your better press platform and your, your better press plates. I don't worry too much about the staining. That just means it's a well-loved supply. I had, <clears throat> And I had taken a separate piece of cardstock that I die cut with that jar. And now I'm gluing that to our folded card base. Now I had used a, an 80 pound cardstock to die cut the card base. And it needs a little extra heft. I have another piece of cardstock that I die cut with that same piece of, or same die, trimmed off just a smidge so it will fit inside the fold. And we'll glue that on the inside of the card also. This will give it that extra weight that um, makes this card feel stable. Just using my liquid glue to do the, to do the same gluing. 
Now remember there are slits cut into this die, so you have to be careful that the glue doesn't ooze through and glue your whole card shut. Now we'll add our embossed and inked heart to the front. I have a couple extra layers of white cardstock that I'm layering behind the heart. One last layer before we adhere it to the front of the card. This will help this card feel more stable also when all of your elements are uh, a little chunky. <laughs> there are a lot of different, there is, I don't have it. I should probably look into getting it. There is um, a nesting heart die set from like an infinity, uh, not infinity, what do we call them? Essential hearts die. Oh, here is more of the glitter cardstock from Spellbinders. This is the silver glitter. I die cut it with the Hello die from the die of the month for April. And again, a couple extra layers of cardstock behind the um, glitter cardstock. Now this glitter cardstock glues very easily behind, the behind of it does, I don't know about the front, most glitter cardstock, it's a little tough to glue things to the glitter portion of that. But this is some nice glitter cardstock. Um, it does make some nice crisp edges. I did have to run it through the die cut machine like four times, you know, forward, back, forward, back, or forward and back, and then shift the die a little bit and forward and back again. And that might mean I need some new cutting plates. Um, next, we're going to take the flowers that we did at the beginning of this video, video for the prep work and add those to the front of the card. I've kind of laid out a plan of where I want these to go. I'm again using these foam strips to add some extra height behind our stitched elements. That actually is a really nice way to do it. It has a little more give than a piece of extra pieces of cardstock. Um, so it conforms to the stitching on the back of your flowers a little better. And again, these are not super thick, so they really do well with the thicknesses that I enjoy using. I'm trimming these leaves apart for the branches to tuck those in behind our flowers. Don't be afraid to do that. Make the die cut pieces work for you. You can always trim them apart or shorten them, adapt them so that they will work well for you in your project. So these last two pieces, I trimmed the top three leaves off and used those with the small flower die. And now I've taken those bottom two and cut them completely free of the stem and using them as individual leaves. And we'll just tuck those in behind our small flower. And then we have a couple more spots I want to add these to. This is uh, behind the large flower. Now remember this jar is a little less wide than Oh, I should take a measurement out. I think it's only four inches wide. So you can have some overlap and it will still fit inside of an A2 size card. I've got my, I got a little measuring tape out here and it's actually three and three eighths inches wide. So it definitely will fit inside of a A2 size card or sorry, envelope, so you can let your florals leak over the edges of the card without having to worry about them getting crushed in your envelope. I did pretty much keep them within the confines of this card though. I don't think I was thinking that far ahead. Now I have all of the elements glued to the front of the card. We have to finish the inside. We're going to take the Better Press of the Month stitched for you and we're going to take the sentiment sending stitchy hugs. I'm using some pink cardstock. Actually, the same pink cardstock I used for the heart. And I'm going to use the taffy ink. There we go. That turned out very nice. And we'll die cut that with the mini sincere sentiment strip dies. You can use whatever skinny sentiment strip dies you have. There are lots on the market and you probably have several in your Spellbinders club kits that you could use. I just like to show things that I think you can get again uh, in the future. 
Now we're going to use a heart that I die cut and embossed with that same embossing folder and we'll glue it to the inside of the card. This time I used white cardstock and I didn't do any ink, uh, direct to paper inking here. And we'll glue the sentiment across that heart. And that completes this card. On to card number five, we're going to use the stencil of the month rainbow floss background. Now, I wanted to make a rainbow of floss here. <laughs> so I am doing the first, so this dice, or sorry, this stencil has several layers. I think it's five or six layers. Layer one does three of the floss and layer two does the uh, in between. So you could alternate just two different colors. Um, I'm choosing to do uh, rainbows of cool and dark, sorry, cool and warm. So I started with pink, orange, and yellow for the first stencil, and I'm doing green, blue, and purple for the second stencil. Now, oh, I did start out with this stencil not taping off the in-between pieces, but I really found it easier to tape off the, so it would be uh, um, easier to do my alternates. Otherwise, you would be just using the same colors over the entire stenciled area. Next, we have the label stencils, and there's two of them because you're going to want to be able to do two different colors. And I, again, masked off some of the areas so I could quickly and easily stencil my different parts. I'm using some blue painter's tape to mask off the areas of the, or the edges of the, the stencil so I don't get ink on the uh, stencil or on the cardstock that I don't want. I'm using wild honey and black soot here for the black and gold on our labels. And I've seen people use, alternate these colors in the opposite that I'm doing. I've seen gold with black circles and or ovals and, and this version. This is how I recall my labels being, but you can do them whatever colors you want. Next, we're taking the Slippery When Wet Lunar Paste, and I'm going to water it down to create a spatter or splatter. I think I take three or four paint brushes full of water to um, get this diluted to the consistency that I want. And I'm just doing this on the packaging for the stencil. Um, and then I'm just spattering this all over the cardstock. I wanted that extra detail in the background. I do love some well-placed spatter. I'm just going to clean this all up very easily with some water. And here is that finished five and a half by eight and a half inch panel. I'm going to pull out the fluted classics ovals. This has been around for a long time and I'm taking the middle sized oval. There are dies that cut around the outer edge of the fluting and then one that cuts around the inner side. You could make a frame. I chose to make two different layers. We're gonna take the smaller layer and use the 3D embossing folder of the month, one stitch at a time, and emboss this inner uh, circle, sorry, oval. Next, we're gonna take a bunch of elements from the pins and needles jar. It's going to be a needle, thread, some floss, uh, twine, or sorry, floss sets here, <clears throat> the coordinating little labels, and I chose to do these in black. And I cut these from some leftover rainbow cardstock from the first card that I made in this video. I hang on to those scraps, especially when I use a half sheet of cardstock. I will have some extra leftover, and I can use it in these different um, coordinating themed cards. The thread here slips easily into the needle. We've got a little thimble and we're going to use another of the sentiments from the die of the month this month. I'm really enjoying these large sentiments with the stitching on them. I think they're just gorgeous. We're going to use happy again. We're also going to use some sub sentiments from the clear stamp and die of the month. And I am going to stamp them with Versifying Claire Nocturne ink on some of that scrap of rainbow ink blended cardstock. 
I'm going to use some clear embossing powder to seal that ink in and have a nice raised shiny sentiment going to use those mini sincere sentiments dies again just the sentiment dies you make me so um what is the sub sentiment mm, i can't remember which card is this oh yeah you make me so happy it says on the front and then on the inside it says we are friends those were the two sub sentiments i used I did put some extra cardstock on the back of these different layers. I'm going to glue together the brushed gold cardstock for the fluted oval and the embossed inner oval. I do have some extra cardstock on the back of the brushed gold one also, and we'll add that right in the middle of our card. I didn't want to cover too much of those um, stenciled embroidery flosses because I think they just turned out so pretty we'll add here our layered happy I did do a, a total of three layers of black die cut cardstock there and then we're going to start adding some of these really fun other elements here we have our sub sentiment the first part of it you make me so happy and now that I finished the card I can see I did put it on there just a little crooked but again we don't have to critique it. This is handmade, not Hallmark. I add those two floss, uh, embroidery floss sections, elements, whatever you want to call them. I crisscross them and lay them under the word happy. Just making sure I'm getting enough glue on there. And then with my tweezer being my third hand, added those to the front of the card. I did struggle a little bit with this and I did learn that you want to have your thread and your needle together when you're doing this. Otherwise, it's quite the struggle to get that tucked back in through the needle hole. Just adding a little beads of glue on that long string. I did manage to finally get that through the needle hole. You didn't want to watch me doing that. <laughs> Just take my word for it. You want to put the thread in the hole of the needle and glue that all at once. On the inside of the card, we're going to put our sub sentiment on. And then I have trimmed these uh, embroidery floss. Uh, I don't even know what to call these. I just call it embroidering floss. Um, the loop, the hank, that's the word, this embroidery floss hank. I trimmed those edges so that they were at a slant so they would make this nice crossed X underneath the sentiment. Part of the reason I did that is because when I die cut them, they didn't have a complete element. There were some little bits hanging out because I was just trying to make the most of my rainbow cardstock scraps. So I had to be a little creative with my placement there. And here I have put the thread in the needle and I'm using my tweezer to hold the thread and the needle together and then added the glue and adhered that to the inside of the card. That was way e easier than my first attempt at this. <laughs> now I'm looking for the perfect placement for that thimble. And I did use some brushed silver cardstock for that. Now we're going to use some Aura Opalescent sequins. And I'm adding a scattering of those on the card front just to add a little extra pizzazz and make your eye follow across the front of the card. Again, I am loving this fine tip glue bottle from Spellbinders. It's working very well for me. There is my finished card number five now we're on to card number six we have some sponge sugar and this is where the dried marigold comes in i'm going to ink blend this on a piece of cardstock this is bigger than five by seven that's all i remember because i am going to make another five by seven card um, as long as my piece of cardstock is bigger than what i'm going to ultimately need i don't worry too much about the exact size unless i have a specific plan for the scraps which I don't this time. So I'm blend it, blending the spun sugar and the dried marigold here together. 
most effectively by adding the spun sugar over the dried marigold in the middle. Then I'm using the faux stitched petal embossing folder of the month. And you can see that beautiful detail. And we'll use the Pearl Luster Gilding Polish again on this. I do love this stuff. Uh, it was well worth the purchase for me. I use it a lot. That for me is a defining quality for a product if I've purchased it, especially a, a consumable product. Do I use it a lot? Is it very versatile? I would say that this gilding polish is one of my most used products. Next we're going to use again those stitched wall hanging dies from the stitching die of the month. This has a nice embossed detail. I'm going to try to bring it out a little bit with this brushed corduroy uh, distress oxide ink blender. There's plenty of ink on this sponge yet so I don't even need the ink pad. Um, I don't know that it really helped bring out that embossing detail very well. We're going to pull out the faux stitched petal again, embossing folder, and use that smaller oval. I'm going to use the uh, Pearl Luster Gilding Polish again. And we're going to take sentiments from the faux stitched sentiments and floss. This is the small die of the month kit. I'm going to use happy again. I told you I love that happy. I die cut that from cardstock three times. Next, we're going to use the everyday sentiments. This is an older die set and I'm using the word birthday. I die cut the uh, craft colored birthday birthday two, I think two times from car, the same cardstock and uh, layered those together. Now we're going to layer those on the shadow element here. I have the two little tittle layers laying next here. So I'll add a little drop of glue above the base of the eye and add both layers of the uh, tittle there. And that's how that looks. I did ultimately end up adding another layer of white cardstock behind this. I think it's only two layers total. I wanted that little bit of extra height here to help separate it from the white background. I'm going to adhere our ink blended and embossed background to the front of an A2, no, sorry, five by seven or A7 sized card base in white and glue our layers together for this. Um, it, if you use the inner oval, this would make a great embroidery um, hoop. I just wanted to use it as a frame and I didn't use the little hanger element that's in the die set. Lots of people have used that. I chose to just use these as simple ovals. Well, you know, simple in the fact that they're not a frame. <laughs> And then we'll adhere the word happy and then below that and slightly to the right we'll add the word birthday because I'm going to put a cluster of those gorgeous stitched flowers underneath this. I did say I made a whole bunch of them before I made the cards and I still have a bunch left. You're going to see them make lots of appearances in this video. Using the white foam adhesive strips again to pop our little flowers up here. Just cutting some smaller pieces so I can add those behind the flowers. I am using my press and seal trick here again. I shouldn't say my, lots of people use this trick and I'm pretty sure Jennifer McGuire is the one that turned us all on to using press and seal. I use the same pieces of press and seal over and over and over again. They do keep their stick for a long time. And my crafting area is a china hutch that I made into a standing desk. Actually, I should say my husband did. He built a nice little platform to put on there to make it standing desk height in the area that I work on. And that area has a big mirror facing it. And that mirror helps reflect some of the light for my videoing. And it's also a great place for me to put pieces of tape and, and uh, press and seal to use again um, at another time. And I do use those pieces over and over again. It's a super easy way to hang on to those extra pieces. 
I love using um, vintage or found furniture for my craft space. I don't think I've purchased any, uh, very little is brand new. Next, we're going to take these pink opalescent sequins and we're going to add those in a scattering around this floral arrangement. I'm so glad I did all of that stitching ahead of time because it was so easy just to pull those out of my little container and use them on all of a, all kinds of different projects. That finishes the front of the card. On the inside, we're going to use one of the new Stampendous stamp sets. This is Birthday Messages. I have this in my uh, open-sided stamping platform. And it says, hope your birthday is filled with lots of friends, family, food, and fun. Um, and now I'm taking some not stitched elements from the stitching die of the month. The, I think this is the larger, nope, that's the smaller flower. One of the small round uh, elements and one, the branch of leaves. And we'll just adhere those to the inside of the card to make it match the outside of the card. The stitching would be too much. I know I'd put like, I like to put lots of layers on things, but that would be a little much on the inside of the card. For card number seven, I'm pulling out the wax seal of the month, which is this really pretty uh, cross-stitched heart with a circle and a needle and thread. It's really sweet. I'm using some opal beads here, pouring that onto my, I use a glass candle stand here just pulled something from my stash and let that cool enough to pull up. I end up using, uh, I leave it on there long enough to do my deco foil marker trick here. I did not do two different colors of wax. I just didn't feel like I had the time to do this. I was rushing, trying to get all 10 of my cards completed before I went back to work. I had to work on Monday and Tuesday of this week. Um, I don't remember the dates anymore. Ninth, maybe? Sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, maybe? Anyway, um, so I was trying to hurry up and get these done before I left for work, but I, I did not manage to finish 10 cards. But uh, because of that, I did not do my two colors of wax sealing in this uh, card. So I did take another three by six panel of cardstock white cardstock, run it through the one stitch at a time 3D embossing folder. And then we're going to use this as our background panel on the front of our mini slimline card here. I have a glimmer foiled sentiment that was die cut with the coordinating banner from the glimmer foil of the month. And we're going to use that wax seal as our main image on the front of this card and then put the banner underneath it. Sometimes it's really nice to have a very simple looking card. All the texture and little pops of shine really make this card stand out. For the inside of the card, we're going to use um, the cross-stitched heart, which matches our wax seal very nicely. And I'm using some gold pigment ink. And when I restamped this, my paper must have shifted because it's just a little, just a little bit of a double stamp image. And then use the sentiment thanks for all you do. Next for card number eight, we're pulling out the faux stitch sentiments and floss again. And I am taking the layered die cuts to make the embroidery floss Hank here. I've got a solid orange piece of cardstock and some ink blended orange, yellow, and pink cardstock that I die cut with the uh, detail elements for this Hank. Now the ends are the same. Um, it's one die that cuts all three of these pieces at once, but the two rounded pieces are exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about which one goes on which end. And then you just put the center piece in. And we'll add that to our piece. And then the two little paper labels. It's a layering die. It cuts two. And you can just layer those up. I use brushed gold and brushed black cardstock to create these. And these are actually the same 
also. So you can you don't have to worry about which one goes in which spot, which is super convenient. There we go. You don't have to be super pre precise with these either. I did three different hanks or three different colors of hanks of embroidery flood, floss. And I'm using the word thanks from the small die and some sentiments from the glimmer of the month with the coordinating die. I really like that I did all that prep work. It really saves me some time later on. We're going to use the faux stitched petal embossing folder of the month again here. And I'm going to make an A2 size card this time. I know, shocking. <laughs> I'm using the gold pigment ink to do some direct to paper over this um, embossed background. There are some solid portions of this raised image that actually look quite nice when you get those hit with your ink. I did add some extra cardstock behind this panel and now we'll glue it to the front of our A2 size card. Now this is in the landscape direction but it is side fold still so it's um, the fold is on the short side of this card. Now I'm spacing these to fit the word thanks between some of these, uh, between two of the hanks. So I'm adhering the top and the bottom ones first. I'll lay my word in there just to get placement uh, correct so it's spaced nicely between these two different embroidery floss hanks. And then I thought I just needed a little extra pop behind this word thanks. So I die cut that word again with black one cutting I think it's just one cutting and then I'm going to offset it a little bit behind the word the gold things and that'll just help it really pop off of this slightly busy background coming back with my fun little spellbinders glue bottle here adding some glue and adhering that to the front of the card now this is a scrap from my ink blended sheet earlier and I'm just going to use my scissors to fussy cut around this and then I'll use this element on the inside of the card. Very nice way to add this to the inside of the card. Now there are three ways to do embroidery floss hanks here. Again this is from the rainbow floss background. Just going to add a little glue behind that. get that nicely adhered and now we need to add a sentiment. I'm going to pull in the bonus die of the month. This is the pins and needles sentiments that you get if you are a member of the uh, die caboodle. Is that what it's called? Die? The uh, whole, it, it, you get every single kit if you are a member of this club. Deluxe caboodle, that's what it's called. I knew there was a D in there. <laughs> So if you're a member of the Deluxe Caboodle, you get a bonus every single month. And this month, it was this die set. This says so many things. On to card number eight. Yes, I am going to make another five by seven card. I have a four and a half by six and a half inch panel of white cardstock that I embossed with the 3D embossing folder of the month, one stitch at a time. We're taking sentiments from the die of the month. We're using for you, and I'm going to die cut those with black cardstock. We're going to use these stitched wall hanging dies where I have the um, flowers all put together here. I had a couple of those embroidery floss hanks all made up uh, with some different colors of ink blended uh, cardstock. I'm layering up the sentiment for you and I'm doing three layers of black cardstock for each of these sentiment words. I'm just going to show you the layering with the word for and it's the same process for the word you. I do put them under a heavyweight block to help them. Next we're going to take a sub sentiment from the glimmer of the month and we'll use the coordinating banner die for that. I'm going to use the rainbow foiled one and this one uh, it hit the yellow and green portions of the rainbow foil when it foiled the words stitched with love. And I thought that went perfectly with the flowers and greenery that I'm using on this card. I'm going to layer this up with three layers of white cardstock. So I've got two extra layers that I die cut out of some scraps to layer behind it to make it nice and sturdy.
You can see my little container full of flowers and stitched flowers from that die set and you can see I have a lot to use yet. <laughs> I'm going to take some of the solar paste, not the lunar paste, the solar paste in Golden Hour. This is another very versatile color. I'm going to use little dabs of it on my fingertip here to highlight the one stitch at a time um, embossing here on this cardstock. This will give it a nice subtle shimmer. It looks very similar to the brushed white cardstock when it's all said and done. If you are going to apply it to an entire piece of cardstock. Otherwise it just adds some shimmery little highlights on the raised areas that you add it to. I put this directly onto my work surface this time because it does very easily wash off of your surface. Now my bottle looks very full but I think it shipped upside down so everything shifted to the top. This time when I closed it back up I, I um, not slammed, tapped it on the car on the desk <laughs> a few times to get all of that um, paste to go back down into the bottom of the jar just to make it easier for me later. I'm again using my press and seal, but I'm going to use the hinge method this time. I forget about this method so often. Um, so I have my arrangement. I'm going to um, use the press and seal foil to create a hinge and then I will add glue an extra cardstock or um, foam strips behind each element, glue it down, pick up the hinge and go to the next layer. This one needs a little cardstock behind the embroidery floss hank. I do have to trim that down a little more. I had already glued it on there and I had to peel it off and trim it off because it uh, was hanging over the edge here. Adding that to that second floss, it's going to cross the first one, so it needs a little extra cardstock at both ends, but not over the center. Then we're going to glue down some of the, oh, I thought I was going to use this next, but I need to glue down some of these lower uh, greenery elements before we move on to the foam parts. Almost missed one of those sets of leaves. And I do give this, you know, 30 seconds or, or a minute to really seal or not seal, adhere to the card front before I try to peel up the press and seal for the next layer. I don't know if this takes less time or not, but it is kind of nice. You don't have to redo your arrangement from memory if you get it just the way you like it. I thought I'd give the hinge method a try again. Now we're going to add some foam strip pieces here behind their flowers. Just gonna peel the backers off. And I'm trying to get this strip of greenery. I should have just peeled it off and stuck it in individually since it was just the last piece. But <clears throat> we're gonna give this a whirl. I got a little crooked on my um, press and seal and the one end kept wanting to curl back out <laughs> it was being a little a little wry, uh, wily there I do end up getting that nicely straightened out and now we're going to add our words now I probably could have added a little extra cardstock on one end of the word four to make it more even across the front, um, but I decided to just go with it, and it doesn't look bad. I already had three layers of cardstock. I didn't really feel like adding more behind it. And then we're gonna add our layered up stitched with love on the bottom here. We're going to use some of the Aura Opalescent sequins again. And I'm going to be kind of generous this time. I really wanted to add extra pizzazz on the front of this card. Maybe because I didn't have um, a layer between the flowers and the embossed background. This feels a little simplistic for my usual style. Which is kind of funny thing to say when there's all of those layers on this card. Just using my 
fine tip glue bottle here to apply the precision glue. And then inside, I'm going to use an oldie but a goodie. This came out last year, I believe. Best wishes on your birthday. It's a large glimmer plate with a really sweet sentiment. I took an A2 size piece of white cardstock. This is the Hammer Mill 80 pound cardstock and some polished brass foil. Tape that in place, put that on my glimmer system, let that heat up for the allotted time and ran it through the um, uh, die cut machine. And there's our gorgeous sentiment. I'm going to pull in the mirrored arch labels and find one that fits very nicely around this sentiment. I didn't want too much extra white space around this since it's going on the inside of the card. Now that I've die cut that, I'll adhere it to the inside of the card. And then I wanted just a little more pizzazz here. So I took those little branches of buds or berries and I'm going to put those just slipped under the edge of the die cut panel. Adds a little extra color and brings the design from the outside of the card to the inside. And you can write your message on the left side of the inside of the card. Now we're on to card number 10. We're going to take the uh, uh, polished brass again, and we're using the Better Press little floss card here. And I'm going to foil this instead of better pressing it. Um, I have another A2 size piece of white hammer mill cardstock and the polished brass foil. I did one right in the middle, and we're going to do two more. And then we're going to use the coordinating die from this Better Press of the Month kit. I love it when there's coordinating dies. And we'll die cut all three of these. There they are, all die cut. You could actually use these for floss if you wanted to. And then we're going to use the Pins and Needles Jar die again. There is uh, a floss card and thread in both the Better Press and in the Large Die of the Month. And the, the, the thread is the same size for both of these. So you can use the threads from on the Better Press floss card. I die cut these from more scraps of ink blended rainbow cardstock. These would be fun in foil too, like um, holographic or, or any of the metallic cardstocks. That would be really pretty too. I'm just adding dabs of glue behind this design element. Just try not to get too much glue on the back, just enough to get all of the little pieces stuck where they needed to be. Then we're going to take the one stitch at a time, 3D embossing folder again, and I have a piece of cardstock that is probably three and a quarter by four and three quarters inches. And this is going to be um, the background panel on my four bar or three and a half by five inch card base. Just getting that nicely scored. Added some glue on that already and I had some extra cardstock behind that. Use my heavyweight block to add some extra weight. And I added a bunch of extra cardstock behind these different pieces of floss. I had to have different lay uh, levels of cardstock because they're overlapping each other. I have this nice little um, arch of the foil cards. Now when using press and seal on foiling, you have to be careful not to press too hard because the press and seal will remove or add kind of a pattern to your foiling. So I tried to keep the sticky part just to the thread areas. Now that I have those adhered, I'm going to take another of the sentiments from the glimmer of the month and the coordinating die. I'm going to have two of these sentiments, one for the outside of the card and one for the inside. This has been layered up with two extra pieces of black cardstock that I die cut from that sheet of cardstock. And then on the inside, we're just simply going to add this single banner. 
So this says, you are so amazing, so thankful on the inside. That's all 10 of my cards. I hope it was well worth the wait. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, of course, this is a great time to do that. <laughs> if you're interested in any of the products that I use today, be sure you check that description box below. They will be listed and linked as always. And there will be a link, link to the visual list because that will have the entire list of products that I use today. Uh, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. And again, I'm not, I don't have time to answer all of them, but I read every single comment and appreci every, appreciate all of you. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.